Learn the truth about intuition. Keep watching. I'm Damon Cart, this is Life Mastery Gym, and I teach people just like you, cutting edge NLP processes and techniques so that you can master your life and take charge of your destiny. So if that sounds good, make sure you click that subscribe button right down here so you can get these videos on a regular basis. This topic always gets me into trouble because when I start talking about intuition and I start debunking the myth about it, people take this very personally. I've noticed that people have religious and spiritual-like beliefs about intuition. Of course, not everybody, but a lot of people do. And so when I start to explain or debunk the myths around intuition, it can actually offend and upset people. So if you're one of those people, you might not want to watch the rest of this video. But if you're curious, keep watching. Also, if you want to just skip to the free stuff, go down here to the description. Not only will you find other videos that I've done on a variety of topics, mostly around NLP, you'll also find a link there to an assessment, which I'll explain more about at the end of this video. Your intuition is not divine inspiration and your intuition is not always correct. So first I'm going to talk about what intuition is not. And it's not those things that I just mentioned, which many people make these assumptions about their intuition being infallible. You hear people say things like, I always trust my intuition. My intuition's never wrong. My intuition has never guided me wrong. And also people link it to something spiritual. Now, if you want to link it to something spiritual, I'm never against that. I think you can turn almost anything into something spiritual. It's okay if you do that. But what I don't think is a good idea is to think that it is infallible or that it is uh, divine so that it is right no matter what. We can get ourselves into a lot of trouble thinking that our intuition is always correct. And not only that, it's not always correct. So the times that it is incorrect, when your intu intuitions are wrong and you just sort of block that information out, this tends to make us more and more delusional when you start allowing in certain things that are not true and that are irrational you, when you open that gate, it allows in a lot of other things. You can't just sort of pick and choose what you want to allow in. You start to then detach more and more from reality. You don't want to do that. I want to give some examples as well. And very, very smart people, even people who I admire and who I've learned a lot from, will often say things about intuition as if it's always correct. I was listening to a coaching call. It was a group coaching call from a very well-known internet entrepreneur whose name I'm not going to say here. He's very successful as well. I've learned a tremendous amount from him. And I was on this coaching call and listening to him really get into the woo-woo. And again, I don't really have a problem with that. I think if you want to delve into the woo-woo thing side of things, that's okay with me. But he went a little too far in my opinion. He did some individual coaching. He would bring people on and he started saying things like, what does your intuition tell you? because your intuition is always correct. If you go with your intuition, it's always going to be right. And I stopped right there and thought to myself, most of the time, when I go with my intuition, when I'm new to something, my, intu my intuitions are completely wrong. Every, all of my intuitions about marketing and internet marketing and even sales before I got into sales, almost all of them were wrong. When we get into something and we're new at it, we're a novice at it, we go in the direction of what we think is right, but often we have to be we have to be stopped and corrected repeatedly. And we come back saying, wow, the biggest thing that I've learned about this is that it's counterintuitive. We, we say that all the time as well. So I want you to think about it like this. Say you were playing chess and you were playing chess against a grand master. And I'm also assuming here that you're not a grand master, but you're going to play chess against a chess player who is holds the title of grand master. If you were playing against that person and you went with your intuition on every move you made, do you think you would win? No, you wouldn't. The grand master would win. Now, why exactly is that? I'm going to explain a little bit later. The grandmaster would win no matter what. It doesn't matter how good your intuition was. If you didn't practice chess as much as the grandmaster did and you weren't, a, didn't have an IQ of like 200, you're not going to win. The same thing goes for, let's use something more physical like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I get into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu 
I went with my intuition because I had nothing else on my first few classes and I got my butt beat. I got submitted. I got held down. I got pinned. You name it. Because my unpracticed intuitions, my uninformed intuitions weren't up to par with the skill level of the people I was going against because I was new to it. And these people had been practicing for quite a while. So I went with my intuitions, but I lost. And pretty much everyone else would too if they had never done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and they jump on the mat with someone who has been doing it for a year or two or even say a black belt. You get a black belt on the mat with someone who has never done it before. That black belt's going to win. It doesn't matter how intuitive you are. It doesn't matter how well connected you are with your intuitions, you're going to lose. So right there, that should tell you your intuition can be wrong. Your intuition is fallible. Be honest with yourself. Think about times when indeed your intuition was wrong. Now that's not to say it's always wrong. In fact, your intuition is actually usually correct. And I'll explain why a little bit later as well. Now we know what your intuition is not. It's not divine. It's not always correct. So what is intuition? Intuition is almost identical to conscious thought. All of the cognitive processes that you use to consciously think about things and solve problems and come up with solutions and sometimes have insights through conscious thought and conscious cognitive processes your intuition really works the same way. It just works outside of consciousness. The reason your intuition can feel like it has some sort of divine quality to it is because when you are dealing with something and your cognitive processes are working consciously, you have conscious cognitive processes that you're working on, so your, your attention, your focus is set on one thing. At the same time, your unconscious can also be solving problems for you. This is the beautiful thing about the unconscious. And this also happens when we dream. Your unconscious, because your unconscious, is working out stress and is working out problems through your dreams. And when you're awake and you're conscious and you're focusing on, on certain things, your unconscious can still be working on different problems. It could also be working on the problem that you're consciously focusing on as well. While that's happening, it's really... All the same processes, all the same cognitive processes, like I said, it's just happening outside of consciousness. But what can happen is suddenly the insight, the solution, the realization that your unconscious has developed through a process, it's been processing all of this, suddenly that intuition or suddenly that realization, the insight, whatever it is, solution, suddenly becomes conscious. And you go, whoa, it's like a ping. You just go, I have an insight or I have an idea. And it seems to come out of nowhere because all of the processing part happened outside of consciousness. The thing that became conscious was the solution, the realization, or the insight. Now, this is feels wonderful when it happens, right? And I'm not knocking it at all. I've had tremendous insights, trem tremendous intuitions that have helped me and served me so well. But what I also don't buy into immediately is that that intuition will be correct. First of all, I want to test it. I want to run it through my conscious cognitive processes to see if there could be any problems with it. And I'm going to test it. I'm not going to just jump off a cliff with an intuition that I've had because my intuitions have been incorrect at times. So how do you cultivate intuition? Well, first I'm going to address why your intuition is often correct. Because when we are using conscious thought processes, we can trip ourselves up. We can overthink things. We can overanalyze things. We can put too much emotion into it, which emotions are, are good. We want to experience emotions. We don't want to push emotions away. But emotions don't tell us a lot of good information about what's actually happening around us. So to make a very good rational decision about something you don't want to block out your emotions, but you also don't want to make that decision from a place of emotion. What intuition normally does is it, it's working, it's a cognitive process that's working unconsciously, which means it's you're not overthinking it. It's your conscious mind is not getting in the way of it. Overanalysis is not happening. It's basically using what you already know and not second guessing it. And so it tends to work very fast and it tends to be correct because it's not an overthought process. But 
in order to have intuitions that are correct most of the time, you have to have developed a certain amount of wisdom and skill level, and you, ha you at least have to have a lot of experience in that area. In other words, you have to dedicate a lot of practice and attention and focus in a certain area. So think about how you're able to speak the language you speak naturally. It's actually int an intuitive process at this point, isn't it? I'm not thinking, I'm not overthinking, or I'm not thinking too much about the next word, uh, the, every next word that comes out of my mouth. Well, why is that? Because I've been speaking English for over 40 years. And so now it's become intuitive, but I can't go learn a new language based on intuition, which I'm actually learning a new language right now. And I can't just rely on my intuition to learn a new language. I have to actually sit down and consciously memorize words. I have to sit and listen to the other language and have it translated until it starts to make sense to me. And this is yet another reason why your intuition is not always right. If you try to learn a language based on intuition, it's never going to happen. But you can sit down with that language. You can soak in that language. You can fill your mind with <laughs> that language by watching movies, by reading books, by listening to podcasts. And so that's the idea is that you're trying to fill your mind with as much of this language as possible so that the words start to make sense and eventually you start to speak it. And then when you first start speaking it, again, it's not going to be very intuitive. It's a very frustrating sometimes and can even be a very difficult process because you're having to use your conscious mind so much. But eventually you do get to the point where it becomes quite unconscious and you can just talk without having to think about every single word or think of really, it's not a, so much a conscious and cognitive process anymore. And now think about driving, the same thing. The first time you drove, it was not an intuitive process. You, it could have been scary. You had to think about all these different things. You have to you know, steer, you have to push the pedals with your feet, you have to shift. There's all these things that you have to do. And so it, you're using your conscious mind a lot. That's why in the beginning, these things can be very tiresome. But after a while, what happens? After years of driving, it becomes so intuitive that you can drive to work and not even remember having driven to work. Why? Because it was all unconscious. You can get into a car and drive from one place to another that you often drive to, like work. You've been doing it a lot. You've been commuting a lot. You don't have to think about it consciously. You can do it intuitively. You just get in a car and go without thinking about it. And you can speed up this process of being intuitive about things that you're learning. You can take something you've already learned and think about how you approach it. And this is what we call modeling in NLP. And you can also model other people and model their approach so that you can speed up this process of cultivating intuition. Now, one of the things that I use pretty much every day of my life and I use with my clients is the self-concept model created by Steve Andreas. What Steve taught about this model is that we don't want to be self-conscious. When we work on ourselves, we are conscious of self. We're working on ourselves for whatever it is that we want to do or create. But once we make the change, we want to allow that to go into unconsciousness again, because to be self-conscious is a distraction. We're thinking about ourselves, but we're having to operate in the world and do things. And that divided attention is what breaks flow. So when we work on a quality, a quality you want to install into your identity, while we're working on it, of course, you're overly conscious of what it is that we're doing and, and installing this quality. But once it's installed, it will eventually, you'll stop thinking about it and it'll just become, it'll feel like it's part of you. And once it's installed over time, it becomes unconscious, which means it becomes even more powerful because you don't second guess it anymore. When you think about times when you need to perform, where you don't want to be self-conscious, you want to just be focused and engaged in what it is you're doing, say like giving a talk to a group of people or some sort of sporting event, playing tennis, playing baseball. If you're self-conscious, you're more likely to make mistakes. And this is why intuition is very powerful. You want to have this skill built into you so well that you don't have to think about it. And this is what we call flow. When you're in a state of flow, you're not self-conscious. You are just going with it. And we've, when we've experienced those states, and I'm sure you have experienced states of flow, it's almost like there isn't a sense of self. There's more a sense of doing. And this is intuition at work, but it's also intuition that has been built upon 
probably many years of practice and lots of experience. If you would like to know more about the self-concept model that I've mentioned here, and you wanna see how it applies to your life and how you can use it to cultivate qualities that you would like to have as part of your identity in such a way that it's completely intuitive and completely natural, there is a link down here in the description. You click that link and it will bring you to an assessment. You just answer the questions in the assessment, which will be based on your values and what areas of life you wanna work on. Answer those questions and then we'll send you the results absolutely for free. And that's the first step in the journey of really getting to know yourself and really getting to transform into the person you want to become. So make sure you take advantage of that free assessment. And while you're doing that, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, make sure you click subscribe to this channel and click the bell so that you'll get notified when I put new videos out. Last but not least, if you can think of a friend or a family member who would benefit from this video, make sure you share it with them. Take care.